Hi, I'm here today with Mary Tabor, Executive Director of the Pastoral Counseling Centers of Massachusetts. Thank you for helping me do with the cheat sheet. And Russ Surveyor, who's a psychotherapist at the mm -hmm. same organization. Thank you for joining us today. Wanted to talk about specifically, it's a, it's a very broad uh, sort of field to talk about, but I want to talk about the consequences of, for family members, trying to help or live with people who are struggling with alcoholism or drug abuse, whether it's a spouse, uh, a parent, a uh, sibling, or a child. Mm -hmm. And maybe a little bit about what resources are available, including the Pastoral Centers, uh, Counseling Centers of Massachusetts as a, as a uh, resource. So thank you sure. for joining us. Absolutely, Pleasure. we're glad you asked. And um, are happy to spread the word that there uh, is hope and there are resources. And I think the one thing that Russ and I were talking about um, is the most profound consequence of addictions is for young children when they're being formed and growing up and to have um, what they need is stability and security and love and trust and to have that thrown aside with addictive behaviors that cause the opposite. Sure. You know, unreliability and... Um, and then the counterpoint is on the family system level. Addiction is just simply disruptive to the family in all kinds of ways. So it's not, uh, so we're not focusing just on, let's say, a, an addictive parent, but an addictive child can be a tremendous disruption sure. to the family. So the whole family suffers as well, mm. you know. No, absolutely, and, and I think it's one of the aspects, if you will, about alcoholism and, and drug addiction that mm -hmm. doesn't get talked about very much. It's, it's just how disruptive mm -hmm. and destructive mm -hmm. it can be toward family members as a unit and individually. Sure. Uh, because you're trying as either a spouse or a, a child mm -hmm. to deal, come up with effective strategies for dealing with Sure. people who are struggling that way and sure. maybe don't even acknowledge it and how do you deal with that or you're a sibling of somebody and how you know uh, how do you well for one thing speaking of a sibling it takes all the attention in in a system in a family sure. um, and therefore just from that alone others in the system lose out maybe siblings or younger sure. siblings oh, or whatever sure. because it's it's um, it's like a sickness that everybody focuses on because it throws the system. Sure. Don't know what to do or how to, um, how to handle things and takes a lot of energy and time. And uh, so right there, it um, is hard for those in the system just because it takes all the time and energy. And beyond that, there aren't any easy answers for mm -hmm. somebody that behaved a certain way and then is not behaving that way, mm -hmm. whether it's a parent or a teen or Otherwise, you know, whoever presents as one person one time when they're sober and a, another way when they're not. And mm -hmm. it's very disorienting, destabilizing, confusing, mm -hmm. and, um, and hard to address, hard to deal with, particularly if you're a child. And it's, and it's made more complicated by the emotion of love. Because if, if the person that who's the addict is someone you love, either a child, a spouse, or whatever, then, then the love wants to somehow help or, or uh, fix it or do something like that. And what you find is that, um, there's, that, the, addict that the addict has to make the change. And until that happens, even people who very much love the person can't do very much. Mm. And that's true for uh, us as, as therapists as well. You know, when I work with people who have addictive problems, I'm really clear with them right from the beginning that I have no special skill here. And that uh, unless they are really suffering the consequences of their addictive behavior and they know that, then there won't be a motivation to make a change, you know. And that's on top of the fact that changing, as, as Mary has said before, uh, because of the brain, uh, the effects on the brain of addictive substances, changing is hard. Once you, uh, when people try to uh, abstain from abstinences, 
the brain actually pulls them back into the, uh, into the substances because it's already accommodated to the presence of the substance. So it's a very tricky problem. And, and before the cameras started rolling, we were talking a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's been one of the, right. the challenges for me to accept that uh, and to learn that it's a physiological you know, brain yes, function as opposed to just a series of bad decisions. Right. It's hard for everybody to think that. Everybody who's involved at the family or friend level, the loved one level, you know, you think, right. why does... Mm. Hard so to and so that. just not do this, or why don't they right. take our help and do this, or do what so Can't and so? Can't they see the consequences? Yeah. Can't you see yeah. what? It's very you're hard doing. to and that's realize. an important point too because initially people don't see the consequences. Initially people, and that's especially true for young people who believe that they're invincible, and that if I take this drug or use this substance, that I'm on top of this, and they don't really understand that in the long run it will be on top of them. Do you know? Right and it will control their behavior, but they, they can't foresee that. So They might even foresee just the opposite. I'll be cute or clever or, or smarter that's true. or that's more true. comfortable. Yeah. Or that's true, that's true. Whatever. So yeah. the consequences for family members, depression, uh, what do you see most often? I mean, resentment, anger, <laughs> depression, they all sort of well, if you think roll of, together. If you think of the, ch let's start with children, for example. Mm -hmm. Children need safety, stability, consistency, good parenting, all Trust. that type of thing. If all that gets disrupted, especially if one of the parents is addicted. Mm -hmm. so, so in general, if we look at the child, um, we're saying that the safe environment that's needed to b bring up and raise up healthy children gets disrupted, you know? Sure. If we're looking at a spouse, then you're looking at uh, actually a competing lover, if you want to put it that way, sure. mm. you know, and uh, and so the spouse is not is not getting the kind of support and dependability and reliability that they need from their partner. Not to mention the way in which addictive behavior can also disrupt the flow of love between two people. Sure. And so it, there, and it creates the opposite of what is needed, as right. in distrust, right, um, anger. Sure. Um, hurt. Hurt, you know, acting out because of that. Right, um, right. It's, it's uh, a so, very hard thing. So for family members, how, first of all, they should go talk to somebody or go find resources that help them. Absolutely. Right. Right. To, Absolutely. To get and some of those resources, one I know is, is your organization. Right, right. It's very helpful to, we also, in, in addition to doing individual therapy, we also run some groups. Um, as they fill on whatever is needed, actually. Um, but there's also um, Al-Anon and um, there's NAMI, which is National Alliance for Mental Illness, that runs support groups for families, so that might include children and adults oh, um, okay. of yeah. the person who has a mental illness tied in with the drug abuse, which is often the case. Um, often people are self-medicating when they have a mental illness. Yeah and that leads to abuse, okay, drug abuse. Sure. And so uh, NAMI is another resource of family support. Oh, okay, okay. Which is very mm -hmm. good, but. Um, I know Learn to Cope has been one of the, I've heard about that, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, we're gonna have somebody from Learn to Cope on the, on the program at some point. But I guess the important part for me is that people understand that if you're in that position, you do need some help yes, and support. Yes. And, and going back to what Russ shared about um, um, not being able to help a person that isn't in the place of wanting help, um, it's about getting support from others and perhaps mm -hmm. even um, experiencing tough love. You know, of if it's, mm -hmm. say, a parent with a child mm -hmm. or a teenager who's addicted or a 20 or 30 year old addiction and the parents are beside themselves because that person has come home because they've lost their job, they've lost their relationship, sure. mm -hmm. whatever, and they're back in their aging parents' home who are thrown completely by the situation. And um, it's very helpful to have um, a support system and maybe even after a certain time of loving them and getting nowhere of having to um, do self, tough love. Well, and that, say, 
you have to go find yourself or be out in the street or whatever it takes because unless you're willing to be in that place of helping yourself, I can't help you. And again, one of the things that the 12-step programs, think places like a, uh, things like AA uh, or Al-Anon and so forth will say is that until the addict suffers the consequences of their own behavior, they're usually not motivated to change because there's nothing driving them to do that. Sure. And although people they care about may be encouraging them and so forth, it's not happening inside them yet. And, uh, and so that, that's where the tough love piece is very important. Uh, and, but that's painful to do. In other words, how do, how do you as a parent uh, set limits with a child? Mm -hmm. You love the child and you don't want the child to be in further difficulty, but you may have to protect yourself in some ways from the child's behavior. And that's, that's, that's pretty very hard. difficult. That's it very, is, very that's hard. Which is why you need help yes. right, at right. that point. You right. need some sort of support right. guidance. You know, how do you talk to the, how do you make that decision? Right. What's the difference between enabling and helping becomes a real That's a great issue distinction. Too. That's yes. a great distinction, sure. It's hard to um, realize mm -hmm. that one is enabling. You know, oh, right. I was just driving him or her to such and such, or I was just right. getting them a haircut or right. paying for their food whatever, right. but when you're in the place of no help coming from the person who's addicted, um, any, right. any piece of that is enabling. Okay. It, it prevents sure. them from realizing the consequences. Yeah. And okay. going back to what you were asking before is what's available in the, for example, the counseling center. Mary was talking about the groups we do. We do individual therapy. We do uh, couples therapy. We do family therapy and so on. So there are a variety of interventions and someone can meet us on any, any of those levels and we, and uh, as a clinician, we sort of decide or work with them and, and try to discern what is the most useful thing to do and then go accordingly. We also are happy to refer people to 12-step programs, either the addict uh, themselves to an, a 12-step program or the uh, people who are connected to the addict to something like Al-Anon which sure. is a program that is 12-step oriented and uh, is a collection of people who are dealing with exactly the same thing, sure. loving somebody who is an addict. So, uh, and I'm sorry to say we have to wrap up this segment, but what's important to me is, is getting people to understand they need help yes. right. and there, are, there is some help available. So Absolutely. take the first step and get that help, whether it's contacting Support, you ideas. or Al-Anon, whatever. Sure. Uh, sure. You know, I think that is so important. So thank you yes. for coming and sharing and, and that. And spreading the word, too, just like this show is doing. Is, is well, that's help. true. I mean, you know, if you're watching this and you're not in that position, but you know somebody who is, yes. suggest to them that, sure. yes. you know, they need to. And your, your uh, facility, your counseling center would be one of the places sure. to make a call to get some ideas. That's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm here today with Bhavna from Bhavna's Wellness Group. Thank you for coming and joining us. I want to talk about a number of things and then we're going to do a Reiki uh, demonstration. You're going to treat me and God knows I need to be treated. Uh, <laughs> and and to, just to let people know a little bit about what's involved, but you do a lot beyond Reiki. That's right. uh, tell me a little bit about what you do and how you got started. So thank you for having me on the show. And uh, it's... It's a unique experience of doing this. And uh, I got into this by chance. Um, actually, um, with my profession, I'm MBA with banking and finance background. And uh, I got into this with an auto accident and trying to heal myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the right side was all went into almost one time. I was rushed into a ER with a paralytic uh, couldn't move. Mm. And I used to be a dancer and everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, um, and then I healed myself with that, but I use Reiki as one of my tools. Okay. Um, and I'm also a community health uh, advocate, patient navigator, and done a couple of certifications from Boston University in understanding depression and helping seniors and adults in going through things wow. in their lives, and even uh, young adults as well. Okay, well that's quite a, 
a leap in some ways from being an MBA to all that, and then, and then an automobile accident that exactly. changes your life and changes exactly. your whole perspective. And exactly. It's like it brings me into thinking, why am I here for? Sure. And it shifted me. I was already in the community serving with, you know, the nonprofits and working in the Indian society, being the cultural share. Very much involved in that, but then shifting to a broader level of understanding, like there's so many people suffering in pain because I went through it myself. I went through physical therapy um, and came out on crutches. Sure. You know, So I was like, there has to be something which is going to get me pain free and make me better and give me the energy to go through my day and not feel exhausted and tired first thing in the morning when you wake up being in pain and then you're dragging yourself through the day and feeling sad and like oh my god mm. and i have to work sure. right so i connected with that and i said i need to shift that i want to feel alive i want to be able to live my life every day every moment feeling great and i want to help others and um and you know, Reiki is one of the tools. It, that you Reiki do is things. one of the tools, and then I also do meditations. I do workshops, helping people shifting their mindsets, negative mindsets, right. not the positive one. You know, I can also do for people um, with touching or not not touching and distantly. Okay. So you could be at home and be in pain and be like Bhavna, texting me or on call or email me, and I can just set up a time and I can send you energy. Oh wow! Okay, and, great. And well, the, and let me explain a little bit so you sure. have an understanding what Reiki and how it works. Sure. It's just like a cell phone, just the way the cell phone works okay. um, energetically. So if I call you on your cell phone, you can hear me at that same moment in time, you know, because okay. the electromagnetic waves travel through oh, okay. the satellite system and goes to yours so it's and it's it picks up. Around electromagnetic so waves. it's the same, same concept. So when you could be at your home and I could be at my office, I could send energy from here and you are the one receiving it, not anybody else. Oh, interesting. So that's, you are the other phone and I am this phone. Okay. So we connect through the energy with the electromagnetic magnetic waves, oh. but there's no satellite in between. Sure, okay. <laughs> well, let's show people so that they get a better idea. Perfect, let's do that. Great. So with your permission, if you're okay, um, can I touch Sure. And do that. So there's two ways of doing it. I don't have to necessarily touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but I want you to feel when I touch, it's bringing your focus back in there. Okay. Okay. So sometimes people like to be, you know, because your mind is running at a hundred mile an hour. Sure. <laughs> so it's bringing that focus and then I'm going to take my hands off, but there'll still be energy. Okay. Okay. While touching, you can also feel my hands go warm or cold. Okay. So you could be talking with me, you could be at home doing your work, at work doing your work. Oh, okay. You could be doing anything, but you will slowly feel, because this can be done distantly as well, mm -hmm. so you will slowly start to feel more calmer, less stressed, and you can get to be more focused. Well, that's interesting, because my inclination was, okay, I'm being treated, so I must be quiet. No. Which is not easy for me, as some of my friends will. Exactly, no, mm -hmm. but, but uh, by the end of it, sometimes people actually, I talk to people and they want to talk and I allow them, but they end up being the whole day feeling much more positive and calmer. Okay. Because you don't want to shift people in what they are or who they are. Sure. But you just want them to be much more calmer, stress-free. Okay. Okay, and that's what we're focusing on, releasing the stress you're holding in your head because that's where your you know the mind takes care of your body sure you know sure. your head has all the nerves going down from your head to your entire body i'm going to come to your shoulders because shoulder is the next place uh apart from the neck where people hurt the most or they have the tightness mm -hmm. because it could be sometimes your posture it could be your way of work, you know, or it could just be the stress, the emotional stress you have from maybe your partner or sleeping. Your role in this is to gather electromagnetic energy 
and have it flow between you and me? Is that right? Exactly. So I'm just a conduit of bringing that energy, which is the positive. I'm in tuned into the positive energy. So now I'm just going to go and work on your neck and your brain, which is right here. It's not me or my energy, but it is the universal energy which is flowing. I call it the positive energy okay. in the universe, and I'm just in tuned into that. The way I teach it is, and I do my sessions, is because of my background and having that analytical mind mm -hmm. uh, with the MBA sure. coming in, is trying to understand how it works in the body. As I worked on you for just a few minutes, as pe you know, you mm -hmm. can see, how do you feel? Well, I feel good, you know, and I think, I think part of that is for me, and maybe it's the, the energy, it's, it's also a focus. Exactly. Of trying to, okay, let's take a couple of minutes here and, and calm, be calm, be, be still. Right. You know, sort of in, in some sense like centering prayer does for me sometimes or mm -hmm. imaging. So this is another another way of, of bringing energy in a different way. Right. So to, what I just did that. for you is I just send energy okay. and I've and now I'm going to just do a clearing. So when okay. I do sessions on people, that's my unique style. Not everybody does it my way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the way you are taught. But I created my uh, my own unique style of understanding uh, what the energy is doing and what I need to be doing for people to okay. help them. Okay. So I've been practicing for many years now. Sure. You okay. know. So what I'm going to do is clear you, okay, and then I'm going to balance you. So that what balancing is doing is grounding that energy inside of you, so that the whole day you're going to stay focused okay. in whatever you want to do that and sounds good. not have a headache. <laughs> that, that sounds very good. I live with a headache. That's just right. Okay, so you can understand. You see I have my bracelets and my bangles, mm -hmm. so you know I'm a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so I love to move because the dance is a form of where you move energy and it brings joy into people. Oh, right. Okay. So a similar, like you feel happy, you're moving, you're moving that air. So the air around us, which is made up by our emotions, I call it the emotional body, with the stress can get heavier. Okay. So I actually shifted with the beautiful positive energy of Reiki, mm -hmm. and I cleared it up, bringing light around you as well. So you're not stuck in the stressful energy. You know, it's just like having a bubble around you of light. Uh, like an aura? Yes, which okay. is a, like a simple term. That, that's why I said bubble. You know, aura, everybody doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. So it could be an aura if you understand that. If not, it's like a bubble around you, which could be made with, uh, you know, stressful energies mm -hmm. from coming from your thoughts or your experiences with people. So okay. if somebody said, or you are having a hard day, or somebody said, you're not doing good today, or you're not good, so now you've got this energy from someone, which is like, and it keeps echoing in your head, and you feel sad about it, mm -hmm. and not feel good enough. It's not just in your head, it's around your head, and puts that pressure. So people who are stressed, you'll see their posture being like that. Sure. You know, sure. instead of being like happy, and, and, but if you are stressed, the whole body, mechanism changes, okay. your face sure. changes. Like when people come to me, they come all stressed and the face is entirely different. But when they leave, they're so much calmer and actually smiling and laughing and they leave. Mm. That's right. you know? And Reiki means, the, in Japanese, the meaning of that The is life energy force. Life energy force, okay. Exactly, so. Okay, Yeah. Super. So It's helping, so now I just cleared you. I'm gonna balance you, so anchor this energy into you. So you're all balanced for the entire day. I have friends who would suggest that balancing me will be quite an effort. <laughs> uh, no, it's, um, it's understanding that I'm just grounding this energy. Sure. And uh, it's helping you to be more of you. I'm not shifting who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. I'm just helping you to be more wonderful you. Well, this, this has been great because I think it, it demonstrates the people uh, another approach that's worth trying and and 
again, it, uh, people have a different view or no view, no idea of what Reiki is. Exactly. So they're like, well, that's something that's done, you know, behind a tent someplace or, no. or and not the case at all. No, and it, it can be done distantly. I have people all over the world I work on distantly. Oh, that's great. You know, you and and we'll be showing your your uh, in contact information at the bottom of the screen yes. and uh, encourage somebody to give you a try if they're you know definitely. feeling stressed and we all are so. yes they can definitely reach me at my email address which is my first name bhavna b h a v n a and my last name s r i v a s t a v a at bhwellnessgroup.com. That's great. Well, thank you for coming and showing us. Oh, and thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. And we'll be back soon. Hoping that we treat everybody today with respect, tolerance, and kindness. Thanks for joining us. Till next time.